We have given up ground as a church, as an ecclesia, as a body of Christ. We have given it away. It's not been taken from us. We have given it up. Babylon has no authority. When I talk about schemes, like registration, schemes are created out of greed, envy, and fear. We've read the end of the book. We know where the victory lies, and it lies in Jesus Christ. This is what I want to do with fear. Okay? Oh, we don't need it anymore. We are the ecclesia. This is a clash of two kingdoms. Because there is a science to registration. Did you know registration is an ancient, ancient thing? The Bible is replete with language that is martial, with language that is governmental, with language that is political. By the way, that word religion doesn't mean Buddhist, Islam, doesn't mean any of those things. It means Jesus freaks and holy rollers. We can mix uh, we can mix church and politics because my Bible tells me that the government will be on his shoulders. Hello Levitical Kingdom privateers. Welcome. This is the C2K report. I am your host Rick Hidalgo and this guy over here, this is Randy Conway. First time I've had him on a show. Welcome Randy. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be with you for the third season, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what episode it is. I think 40. 40. Yeah. You know, there's 52 weeks in a year. We do a, a, a show every week. week. I think it's week 40. And it is good to be with you uh, again this week. And uh, we had a nice little uh pre-show conversation for about uh, half an hour and i think we're uh we're ready to talk about uh, uh what's going on in the ecclesia what what god's showing you and the direction <laughs> and it's all about direction i i think if i'm understanding what the what you explained to me in the pre-show where it's all about direction yeah and we're not talking about like one direction i'm not a boy band kind of guy you know what i mean so <laughs> but but you know it is about the one way, and so so what we're going to talk about tonight, Randy, is communities of the way. Communities and, of the way. And what what we want to do is just provide a picture of okay. what it might look like and how it differs from the Babylonian system, because there is this idea out there that a lot of what Babylon does, um, you know, is correct and right, and I'm not going to debate. With that, because the truth is, the way Babylon is set up, it does have a surface level look to it that does look like it's effective and maybe even right. Um, but when you start to peel away the layers, the intent of the system is, is not righteous. And right. the way that the system operates itself is not righteous. Oh, I think a lot of people understand that and get that. I mean, over it's the last few years people have heard that term deep state and it and it's with an intent with purpose that it's called the deep state because you're right on the surface there are some good things that happen and people, you know, um they like you said they they believe hey, this is not a bad system, it's the best system in the world and that may be true, but it it, it is for appearance sake. It is on the surface and it's done that way intentionally uh, so that we don't look too deep to see um, any uh, ungodly or evil or cruel intentions. And uh, those have been being exposed by, by others uh, for probably the last three years. Uh, with uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of exposure, but I, I like what you're talking about. We want to we want to make a different exposure, um, and we want to expose uh, another way, communities other way. That's a great great title, uh, and I and I the reason I think it's a great title is I even told you this, and you probably already knew it. You don't you don't uh, ever correct me and tell me you already knew something. You just smile and. <laughs> Shake your head and let let me rattle on, <laughs> right? But you know, after Jesus' resurrection, and the disciples are going out and they're telling people about this person 
uh, Jesus Christ and Paul's on his missionary journeys and and you know you've got Barnabas and Silas and and you've got Philip you've all these stories in the New Testament about the um, presenting the gospel message and you know the people that came to follow Christ were not called Christians originally they were called people of the way and uh, we're trying to get back to some original intent in this in this nation and even the world we're trying to get back to some original intent of the word understanding that Jesus is king period we can stop now Jesus is king exclamation mark that, right Trying to get back to that original intent. So I like the fact that you said we're looking at the way, and we are a community. And the way breaks down into a lot of different subcategories. I mean, tonight we're going to talk about governance. We're going to talk about infrastructure like food, energy, healing, those kind wow. of things. But, but you know, but it starts, Randy, with something that I think a lot of us have – you know, we've got propaganda in us because we were raised in this beautiful country. Uh, we were raised to be, you know, patriotic and to, to know our history. In our history, you know, there's just one aspect of our history that we've been told all our lives. And I'm going to expose to you how it's actually a cop-out. Okay. It's actually a cop-out from the way that it should be when you do it in Christ. And that is, do you, have you ever heard, uh, uh, have you ever heard the, the term uh, no taxation without representation? Seems like, seems like there were some guys back in Boston that were, that were talking about that at one point in time. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it seems like the idea of representation has almost taken on a holy, sacred, you know, uh, tune to it. But I'm here to tell you that that's actually a cop out. It's actually right. a cop out to to think that uh, you know to to truly desire to be represented, because God never anywhere in the Scripture gave us a gumption as his people to be represented. We are always the ones doing the presenting. Mm -hmm. We are presenters, and we can't really be represented. And that's part of the fallacy of this system, because let me, let me, let me just kind of explain it to you this way. You know, everybody's familiar with, like, their school board or their city council or maybe their county, you know, board of directors or whatever they happen to call themselves in your area. And those are usually men and women that have been voted into that position in order to represent your will. Okay, or at least that's the way it's that's the way it's presented, right? In order to represent your will. Now, the problem with that, Randy, is that human nature is is a it's a sneaky thing. Okay? What tends to happen and I got a fly infestation, guys, so if you see a shadow go across my camera, it's cuz one of those little suckers just flew across. Anyway, um, they're harvesting up there where you're at. They're stirring them up, man. Yeah, it's it's just it's terrible. And in this office, uh, I've got an air conditioner off this direction that's still in the window because it gets hot one day, cold the next. So I can't I can't just take it out because I might burn up in here one day, you know. <laughs> and, and there's a slot. There's a I slot in it. the window where they get in. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. Anyway, so anyway, <laughs> what I what I'm what I was getting at is human nature is a terrible thing, and right. what tends to happen is we as 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 uh, you know human beings, we get into a position where we magnify our own self interest. Oh yes, 
And we tend to view the world from the perspective of our own eyeballs. So I can't, I can't climb inside of Randy's head and say, hey, you know, let me see if I can see the world through Randy's eyes. I can't do that. I can't really represent Randy. Randy's got to rep, he's got to present himself. So, so one of the fallacies that we have in our system, Randy, is that our governance doesn't allow every house in a community to present themselves. There's just not enough time in the day uh, in, in using the system that we have now. Could you imagine? Just imagine for a second you're at a school board meeting and every house in the community has to be given time at that school board meeting to present their, to present their house. How long would you be there? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and sometimes you watch some of the uh, videos of people that are at those school board meetings, and they they give them such a limited amount of time that it's nearly impossible for them to even make a succinct point. Right. Exactly. So so we we're in this situation where we have not formulated a plan of governance which allows every house to be presented in the community so that you really understand what their interest is because government from the perspective of we the people or we the ecclesia however you want to formulate that government has to look out for the interest of all the people all the interest across the community you can't leave the interest of this house and this house and that house behind because then what you start to get is a lopsided system that 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 um, that's got a that's got a, that benefits these these people over here but these people over here are not benefited um, it begin it begins to look like a caste society where you've got different levels you've got an upper class middle class lower class sound familiar absolutely so absolutely. so so we we've got to first formulate an understanding of what true governance in the eyes of God looks like and you can look back to Moses for that mm. and it and it's it's it, it, mo, that that what was happening in in the Hebrew nation I'm going to call it that okay right. but right. what was happening in that Hebrew nation at that time was not a representative form of government. Okay? Every house was presented, but they were presented at different levels. And that that bottom level that's that was closest to the closest to the people, that bottom level, every house had the ability to to bring forth its, you know, its interest and and then f amongst those people, Randy, Amongst those people, one or two were selected from among them to to govern over numbers of people. Right. Okay, but that governing wasn't like telling you you can't pray on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's not the kind of governing that they were doing. The kind of governing that was being done was more of a judicious type of governing. When issues happened between people, they would bring it to 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 that man who was selected uh to be over 50 to be over 100 to be it right. was like uh it was like having a uh a community court and then a uh you know a national court and then uh earth court right it was like different levels of of presentation not representation and that's where that's where we've completely thrown off the model of governance is not a, not every person uh, gets presented, and their interest is not presented. I, I totally agree, and um, of course, you know, we could talk about uh, the way senators uh, are elected now rather than being selected by the state to send. And there was a time when if yeah. they if they were not functioning in a manner that was representing the way the people wanted to be represented, they were gone. They, put, mm -hmm. they pulled them out right? and uh, can't do that anymore. Now they're, they're elected and they serve their terms and they serve multiple terms. But let's go back to for a second. And I love the Hebrew nation because that's exactly what happened. 
uh, it was things were adjudicated with that God's law, but they were living their own lives. They had heads of houses, the tribal leaders, the tribal patriarch, the 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 uh, uh, the pater of that tribe, and uh, but within that tribe, and they could be very large. I mean, you know, some hundreds of thousands of people in the tribe of Dan or the tribe of Reuben or the tribe of you know name name one of your tribes, and they were living their lives. But as you uh, you explained earlier, human nature is is a peculiar thing. Heads would butt. There would be arguments, and things were adjudicated. And it was uh, Moses's father-in-law that said, "Moses, you can't you can't adjudicate for all these people. Right. You've got you've got to set some over a hundred, and some over fifty, and some over ten, and and so on." Exactly right. But let's go back for a second to you, you know you said. Uh, no taxation without representation. And that actually goes back to the Boston Tea Party that everybody's very, very familiar with. One of those great stories that you learned in history class and, you know, probably sixth grade somewhere in there. And uh, and it is a good story because they weren't represent they, they weren't represented on either side of that fence. OK, they said, OK, you're throwing these taxes on us and we don't have a voice in that. But they didn't ask somebody to go represent them to the king. They took and presented themselves in a very uh, bodacious fashion, um, and made a made a. Uh, they didn't just stand on the street corner holding a sign. They 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 made a uh, a point that hit them in the pocketbook. Uh, I'm not uh, I'm not advocating well, they, that, that you go do civil dis- disobedience. But was that not presenting themselves and presenting their case in the in the only way they knew how to do it? Silver is hot. It is real money. It is God's money. So I encourage you to get your Liberty Dollar account now. The big commercial price manipulators have thrown everything that they had at silver over the past five days and still the silver price remains strong. Get your silver account now. Help Liberty Dollar folks get to the 3000 mark. My whole family has an account. And I encourage you to please get yours now. We need you. You'll be really glad you did. Watch what happens with silver. Thanks. Well, so, you know, in that case, they were attempting to present themselves and they were being turned away by the crown. The crown was saying, we don't want to hear you. Look, you just do what we tell you to do. Shut up and eat the cake. You know, so they resorted to some civil disobedience to say we're not going to shut up and go away. And, and you know, so if we look back at that, we would go, you know what, was that righteous for them to do that? You know, there was probably a better way. But at the end of the day, yeah, that's what they were doing is it was, they were making their case. They were presenting their case. But we can, we can all uh, um, feel that frustration right now today. We can understand their frustration, and, and you're right. Yep. We are not represented, nope. even if that were a good thing. And we cannot. You're right. We can't actually go present ourselves. Try to get uh, your voice heard on on the uh, house floor, or you know. Well, here, here's the, the sen- thing. Here's the thing. To even think that anybody is ever going to represent you and your will. That's an audacious thing right there in itself, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, because what makes you more important than your neighbor, right? So the things that get represented are things that are more of a collective aspect, right? That's good for all people. So so the, you, you should never be represented at a local level. You're, you're represented the, the whole of the houses, are represented at a at a higher at a national level. That's where the representation takes place. Yeah, of course, when this was established, I, I can understand that they're thinking. It's just like you said. Ha- there's not time in in, in the, the day, much less the year, much less your life, for everyone to be presented individually. But those, the representation that was that was laid out there. There was no career politicians, and they didn't serve, you know, fifty years. And and literally, they they were they were representing the interests of a state, not you, not me, not the people. They were representing the interests of the state within the federal government. 
So it was the interest of the government from the get go. It was never the interest of the individual, but it did work slightly better because they weren't career politicians. They knew their people back home. They went home, they, they, they served a term and, and someone else went in and said, well, you know, that's not what's happening in Virginia now. We need, this is how we need to present things now. And that's not what's happening in North Carolina now. This is how we need to present. That Those days are long, long, long gone. And what they did, you're talking about tonight, your title is Communities of the Way. They created their own communities. This governing system, this representation, this uh and, and it's a pretend representation. It's a facade of representation. It's the facade you talked about on the surface. Babylon might look good in some areas. This whole facade literally has created its own community to support its own interests, to represent its own interests, to represent <coughs> the corporation, to represent Babylon, because there's so many things that have been uncovered, as I said earlier, from people who are digging into the deep state and doing these deep dives. It's like, that doesn't that doesn't uh, support the interest of the common man. That doesn't support the interest of anyone except the community of the wrong way. You know, so right now there's people watching this and they're going, man, I'm, I'm really confused. I don't know where you guys are going with this. <laughs> and so I want to, I want to, I want to go down to the, the, mind, the minute level and I want to fix that. Okay, so so let me let me put it this way. <clears throat> so, what's wrong with the with with that system as as it is functioning today? Is have you ever heard uh, somebody ask? Have you ever heard somebody say uh, in church that God has a plan and purpose for your life, Randy? Yeah, I've heard that. You you've heard that. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the community. There's a plan and a purpose for that person to be used in that community in order to provide some kind of a necessary service or good for that community to prosper. Absolutely. Okay? Now, how do you know what those things are unless someone presents themselves to you those you things? Don't. Okay? You don't. So, so right there, that's that's one strike against the system. That no one is ever allowed to present themselves uh, in, in this system. That's one strike against it right there. Number two, number two, second strike against it is when you discover that somebody has a particular talent within your community to provide a particular th good or service in your community that's going to enrich it and enhance it who funds that thing randy uh, the rothschilds well so so you <laughs> what you're telling me is that i have to go fund that myself i have to go you know take out a bank loan i have to take all the risk right but if a community was set up correctly randy where the interest of every member of that community was presented, the community itself would fund that thing that the community needs to be to be enriched and prosper. Because it would enrich the community. Right. And uh, that that reminds me, as communities become enriched by the individuals coming together as community, is is it that not unlike the uh, the stories in the Old Testament, when the Hebrew people moved in or, or were in an area, the surrounding area was blessed because of them. Yeah, it's kind of until, kinda, until it, they asked for a king, and then <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like that. Um, you know, I've often heard uh, all through all through my life. Uh, there was a lady um, that I, I I used to sell insurance years ago, and the lady who was training me to, to sell insurance, she used to tell me all the time, it rains upon the righteous and the unrighteous, but it rains for the righteous sake. Hmm. So what you just said reminded me of that, Randy, because that's, that's exactly how it goes. You know, you, you, you have, uh, when, when righteous people move into an area, 
It enriches everybody, but it enriches everybody for the sake of the righteous. Wow. Yeah. And I think you can see that played out in its antithesis when you look in some of these major uh, cities that are, are overrun with <laughs> uh, homelessness and, uh, you know, defecating in the streets and, and needles laying on the sidewalks. And Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Minneapolis, you know, uh, you know, that, that one's... Like that one's close to me, but there's, oh. there's all kinds, there's all kinds of cities and we, and we know what those cities are and we know, you know, who they're run by, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, what we have to start to realize is that part of our problem with governance, with the way that we govern things today, is that not everybody, uh, not everybody's interest is, re is, is, is presented and and we don't take the time to ask ourselves, you know, how is it that this individual of the of the community can bring, uh, you know, enhancement and prosperity to the community? Yes. You're you're talking uh, about the individual houses within that community um, being presented because they all have something to offer that's going to enrich. That's a great word, enrich that com community. And as that community is enriched, so are the surrounding areas enriched. And when it goes the other way, so are the surrounding areas going the other way. I can tell you a story of a community that I'm very, very, very familiar with firsthand knowledge because I live here. <laughs> okay. Years ago, a group of men got together and they created a, a, um, an organization, let's call it, and they sold stock in this organization. And it was supposed to be to, to better the community, to enrich the community, to bring industry and business in so that the community could thrive. But what ended up happening, those stocks got all bought back became completely worth, worthless to anyone that was holding them. In fact, they made sure that they could buy them back because they made sure those stocks became completely worthless. And I think it was about four men that owned them all at that point. And, and at the end of the day, what had happened, this organization that was going to um, enrich this community had created such regulations and statutes and they sat on city halls and they were attorneys and they and sit, you know the mayor's office you could not if you came down to my community and say i've got a great idea for a business enterprise and i want to bring this business into your community and it's going to create this many jobs and it's going to create this much you know revenue and you could not do that except this organization gave you the green light to do it how did you get the green light to do it? They had interest in your business. They finally got that got that crushed and, and got rid of that. But that goes back to what you said earlier about human nature and whose interest are they really representing? Whose interest are they really serving? That, that I mean, that's a real life of ex example of something that really <laughs> happened. And until they got until they got that organization disbanded, and and stopped and 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 rescinded some uh, city ordinances the community stayed exactly the same for years and years and years and now it, it is becoming enriched some there's people becoming wealthy in this community and people doing business and, and expanding their business but it, it's that same mindset that you're talking about because the communities of the way are going to enrich not just themselves not just my little group they're going to enrich the community, and uh, the uh, the antithesis doesn't look pretty. No, and from an individual perspective, it, when you, when you when you do governance according to the way, um, the you know you're you're promoting the interest of the house that's presenting itself, and no matter at, you know no matter what the what their financial economic uh, portfolio looks like or, or, or whatever, you, you know, you've got a duty to, uh, before God to, uh, to, bring, to bring that house along with you uh, 
in, you know, in, in that community so that, so that every house can prosper within that community. The Babylonian system doesn't do that at all. They look at an individual as an asset. Sure. So they, you know, and through schemes that we won't talk about here because, you know, everybody has their own opinion as to whether they exist or not, but I'm here to right. tell you they do. And when, right. when, when Babylon schemes apply to the individual, um, th those schemes actually make the individual surety for the thing that they're attempting to do. So, mm -hmm. so it's designed to fail. So when it fails, they become surety for the failure, and guess what? Now they're going to be making license plates in prison. And it goes back to uh, that term that we've used so many times over and over and over. Where's the interest? Yeah, where's the interest? Where's the interest? Compelling interest. What did you think of number three? That was the, that was the thing. Yeah, oh, that's okay. what I just went over. It was the, the individual. That's three checks against the Babylonian system as far as, you know, the, the ability for a house to present itself. So, so Babylon strikes out in governance already. Okay, even before we get to anything else uh, uh, tonight, but I want to I, I want to present you with an idea. Okay. And it's almost a dangerous idea because it's the kind of idea that the immediate reaction of people is going to be you're a heretic. Okay, first of all, and the second immediate reaction that people are going to have is, hmm, how can I use this to my advantage? Hmm, okay. Strike both those things, okay? Let's not even go there. Just listen to what I have to say. This is going to open doors in your mind for you to be able to do some things that possibly could benefit your community, your family, and the world that you live in, okay? Did you know that oh, I saw a flag go across your screen just a minute ago. That was a gnat, yeah. Oh, a gnat, okay. Did you know that as, as a man or a woman of the way, that you are an ambassador of Christ, that you are a bond servant of Christ, and that you are indentured to perform according to, um, a, 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 you know, according to the ways of his kingdom? Did you know that? Yes, you're and, you're actually you're actually indentured, and, and you know you're you're the first person I've ever heard that use that term indenture in relationship to our uh, relationship with with Jesus Christ as an indenture. Well, it's it, it's a fact, but now I'm going to tell you something that people are going to go. Did he just say that? That is so sacrilegious. You ready? Here ready. we go. Did you know that Jesus is also indentured to us? Okay. I, I got to let that sink in for people. I want them to get good mad before I explain it to them and make them feel dumb for being mad. Okay. Did you know he's also indentured to us? He told us, Randy, I will never leave nor forsake you. Right. I will... Meet your needs according to my riches in glory. Those are indentures, Randy. He yeah, told us. Promises, but yeah, I see that. Those are indentures. That's what they are. They are indentures. Just like when the forefathers of the American experiment, which I love calling it that, <clears throat> the right. forefathers of the American experiment pledged their sacred oaths they pledged their fortunes and they pledged themselves right their bodies right. to one another their their very lives guess what randy jesus pledged his life to us too he became surety for us yes, right he his blood has unbelievable effects it's for the remission of sin, right? I mean, we have an amazing relationship with Jesus. Not only are we a bondservant to him, but he pledged his life and his fortune to us. 
And you know what? The Rothschilds might be rich. But they ain't Jesus rich. Okay? No. They don't they don't have it all. They actually they have nothing. They think they have something, but they have nothing. Okay. Right. Jesus literally owns it all. It was bequeathed. I love that word. It was bequeathed right. to him in Matthew chapter 28 when it says that it was given him all authority in heaven and earth. All authority. All authority means that he also has authority over all the riches of the world. Now, I'm not telling you this so you can get this idea that I can get rich quick. No. I'm here to tell you that Jesus will fund that thing that he has for you to do to supply his kingdom. Okay? He will fund it in his time, in his way. Now, Randy, there's people out there who, who, who right now are saying, Rick, there's been, you know, there's been bond servants of Christ on this earth for thousands of years. How come he hasn't done it before? How come it doesn't, how come this whole uh, earth has, it, you know, uh, uh, on earth as it is in heaven hasn't already been funded? Well, Randy, can I answer that question? You can answer that question. Okay. We have never operated with clean hands and clean feet, Randy. Not as an ecclesia. We have never operated with clean hands and clean feet. We have always given away compelling or controlling interest to the Babylonian system time and time and time again. The Hebrews did in Egypt. The Hebrews did in the desert. The Hebrews did in Babylon. The Hebrews did in their own country of Israel. The Hebrews did. In fact, they did it so much, Randy, that God said, here's a pill of divorcement. Okay? Right. They did yeah. it so much. Okay? And guess what? We're no better. We keep doing it too. We hand it over to Babylon all the time. Say, here, Babylon. Here, why don't you control this? Oh, marriage? Yeah, okay, God says it's between a man and a woman. Well, let's stick the state in there, okay? Because that sounds good, right? Why not stick the state in there, you know? So time and time and time again, we keep complicating things by giving Babylon compelling and controlling interest over things. And then we think that, you know, with, with all that compelling interest over Babylon, that we could just enter the, key, the courts of heaven and say, Jesus, here I am to collect the fortune that you... Have, want to bequeath upon me so that I can do the work of the ministry. Do you see a problem with this, Randy? This is the thing. We've got to clean. We've got to become clean hands. We've got to become clean feet. We've got to have men of God who literally are put on this earth to to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And I'm not saying that there aren't a lot of good men out there, but our churches have gone far from equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. We, are, we, we equip them to sing. We equip them to put on robes. We equip them to be baptized and to fill the baptismal. We, we equip them to do a lot of things. We can visit the sick. You know, we can visit jail. We can do prison ministries. We can do, you know, all kinds of things. But we have, we are way far away from equipping the saints for the work of the ministry on earth as it is in heaven. Welcome to Stone's Throw Acres. If you enjoy nature as God intended it, you'll feel right at home. Here on this ranch, work and play are one and the same. We enjoy working in and with God's nature, not against it. We wouldn't be telling you the truth if we said it was easy, but the fruits of our labor are worth every ounce of effort. We are excited to show you our little ranch. Join us at www.shopyourfarm.com and find the store at Stone throw acres there we will supply you with nutrient dense foods at a fair price here at stone's throw acres 
Our mission is to work with and not against God's nature to restore the soil's health and give life-giving properties. As we achieve this mission, we work towards our vision in providing an opportunity for all people to have nutrient, natural, dense foods at a fair price. Come to Storm's Throw Acres today at shopyfarm.com. Absolutely, and we, we believe the same lies uh, from the same liar for generation upon generation upon generation, all the way back to the garden. Did God really say, and we're, we're living in a time where, did God really say you can do that when, the, when Babylon said you can't? Can you really self-govern, you know, and, and we think self-governing is getting someone to represent us, as you talked about and, uh, when you started this uh uh, this show tonight, and we have got to get a mindset that that literally erases everything that you understood about church and governance, because we've separated church and governance, and how do you do that and then put the government on his shoulders? How do you do that and claim Jesus is king? How do you separate those things? You cannot separate. We don't know how to self-govern. Uh, we believe someone else will govern for us. And what you're talking about, equipping the saints, we, be, we, we have done the exact same thing. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what we've done. And I'll go back to self-governance for a minute. We know about self-governance. We know what this great American experiment. And we know it's the consent of the governed. And there's people marching around right now saying, I will not comply. And while they're saying, I will not comply, Babylon holds a hundred percent compelling interest in everything they do, everything they do. And yet they're saying, I will not comply. But it's because yeah. we have a misunderstanding, call it even a misrepresentation in our own minds of what self-governance actually is and what it looks like. So let's flip that over now into what you're talking about in equipping the saints. We have a misunderstanding, a misrepresent, re, misrepresentation of what that looks like on earth as it is in heaven. All power in heaven and earth is given to the person, Jesus the Christ. And then he commissions us, and by agency, we have avail that, that authority available to us. But we're doing the same thing we do in governance. If all, all we're doing is waiting on Jesus to come back and make everything right. We're making waiting on Jesus to make the church right. We're waiting on Jesus to make Babylon right. We're make, waiting on Jesus to make everything right. And all along, he said, now, I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father, and you go and you teach everything I ever commanded, everything I ever said, all was the is the term that's used in Matthew, teaching everything that I have commanded and then baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that commission was given to the sons of God. It was given to the men who followed the way. And we have been guilty of waiting on someone else to do it, or, or I will give my money to the church and they'll take care of it. And that way I'm participating, right? In a way you are. I don't want to, to, to dismiss the fact that funds are needed, but you know, I'm talking about a mindset right now, not, not that action. So we're waiting and waiting and waiting. And yet the Bible talks about waiting. And, and I've probably done this a dozen times if I've done it once, Rick, but it just is so important. It says that the earnest expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And it's, it's waiting, it's, it was put in that position by God himself in the hopes um, that we would fulfill our roles as the sons of God. Because it goes on to say that uh, um, the all creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together till now, uh, so that um, it would be set free into the liberty of not the return of Christ, not the liberty of, um, you know, the next uh, revival, not into the liberty of um, one thing or another. It was um, because creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of 
the children of God. We are supposed to be living free. We are supposed to be living in the freedom wherein Christ has made us free indeed so that creation, all creation, can live the very same way. And, and it's, it is just so huge that we have misunderstood our calling just like we've misunderstood our self-governing. We just think if we make this, if we have our, our uh, protest sign and say, I will not comply, um, that's, a, that's enough. And, and we've never really self, we've never removed the, the compelling interest of Babylon. And on uh, the side of doing the work of the kingdom, we've never done the kingdom work. We've not established truth and righteousness, a place for his throne to, to, to sit. We've not fulfilled the Great Commission. And it's more than, it's more than just bringing people to Jesus. Not that that's not the utmost and the most important thing, but it's more than one thing. He said, teaching them everything that I commanded. Amazing. You can drop your mic now. That was good, man. I, I appreciate that. Look, you know, <clears throat> so I came from a church where there was a lot of <clears throat> a lot of training that took place. So I'm not saying that there's no training taking place in churches, yeah. right? <clears throat> but here's here's a word picture for you. The scriptures present us with a cookie cutter of what Jesus want what Jesus wanted us to communicate with his disciples with everybody who came into his kingdom he he provided us with a set of cookie cutters Babylon also provided us with a set of cookie cutters they laid it out there for us they presented us with a with a set of cookie cutters and they said now if you use our cookie cutters We'll promise you that we'll leave you alone. Okay? Yep. <clears throat> this cookie cutter here is a 501c3. Okay? There, okay, we got that one. Okay. This cookie cutter is when you go to seminary or you go to Bible school, you go to, to an accredited Bible school. Okay? It's got to be accredited by Babylon now. Okay? There's cookie cutter. They, they got these set of cookie cutters that they have established that keep us in line. It keeps us in the in the shoot. We're never allowed to leave the farm. Okay, we're we're in that shoot eternally as long as that we're on earth because we keep using Babylon's cookie cutters. If we would just shed Babylon's cookie cutters that they presented us and they allow and they allow us to use in order to you know go along with the flow and start using the cookie cutters that Jesus gave us to, to, first of all, understanding what ministry is, it's not just singles, music, you know, pastoring, visiting, you know, it's, it's not just those things. It's, it's also the infrastructure of the community. It's food, it's energy, it's healing. It's all the things within the, within the community that need to be done Everyone has a purpose to it. Did you know that in ancient <clears throat> in ancient Venice, right, there was a house. Uh, I don't, I don't I think, was it Venice or was it another one of those little tiny city states? I don't don't kill me, history buffs. Okay, because I might have this wrong. I should get my son, pull him in here, and he could tell you the whole story. Okay. But, but in my, but, you know, there was a house in in Venice, I believe it was, the Venetians, um, where the house of uh, was a Medici, the house of Medici. They were the bankers, right? The whole okay. house of Medici were the bankers of the of the Venetians. Now they were evil; they did things in a contrary way to the scripture. But my point is. They were a house dedicated to a particular function of the community. It's an example. Even though it was on the evil side, it's an example of the evil ones using 
uh, a God created concept and stealing it for their own use. Okay. Mm. If mm. you can imagine a, a house of your community <clears throat> being dedicated to the banking needs of the people, a house of your community um, being dedicated to the energy needs of the people, a house of your community is dedicated to the sanitary needs of your community, and, and on and on and on and on and on. Everybody has a part that can enrich their house, can enrich the community, and can bring the entire community to a place to being that beacon of hope so that everybody else can look upon it and say, we want to be like that, right? Right. I mean, right. where are we? What are okay. we doing? I've got an example to give you, but before I do okay. that, I'm going to back up to, to, to what I was just saying, because I want to clarify something and make it extremely crystal clear, okay? I like crystal clear. I'm not talking about a theocracy that's ruling in the, and, and, and being the government. I'm not talking about a religious organization being the government. I'm not talking about the government being the religious organization. We had our founding fathers that knew that wasn't going to work. <laughs> But you cannot, you cannot say you're the vicar of Christ and then say Christ is king. Ooh. You cannot say that uh, oh, Jesus was a great prophet, but he was just a prophet and say Jesus is king. You cannot say Jesus was a good man and that's all he was, and, and he was not God in the flesh. You can't say he's a good man and say Jesus is king. It comes down to that way is understanding Jesus is king, and I will be the first to admit it is, there are as many wars across history caused by religion as there are by politics. And I'm not <laughs> talking about, I'm talking about He's, the way. Jesus yep. is king. And when Jesus is king, that is a political position. It is also a spiritual position because what do we pray? You said it earlier, on earth as it is in heaven. There is a governance in heaven, and we want that same governance to come here. And it comes down to free will <clears throat> placed on us and the choice to, to recognize, is Jesus king of my life or not? If he's king of my life, is the only king of my life in that little red brick church I go to on Sundays, or is the only king of my life on certain times, you know, uh, uh, certain feast days, is the only king of my life when it comes to spiritual matters, or is he king of my life in everything that he taught, as he said in Matthew 28. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not advocating for a religious political system. Right. I'm not advocating for politics to be a religious system. I'm advocating that Jesus is king and we have to we have to understand that to follow the way and we cannot follow the way if there's this huge big chain of tether tethering us back to Babylon because we cannot serve two masters. Have you ever wished you could get a one-of-a-kind, high-quality knife made by caring hands instead of a mass-produced piece of tin? Robert's love for bladesmithing began at a young age when he met some experienced smiths and was amazed by the ages-old traditions of handcrafting metal and steel into stunning, functional artwork. When he first hit the hot steel with a hammer in 1986, he was forever hooked. Nearly four decades later, his passion is still alive and well. Robert's love and appreciation of the marvel of God's awesome creation grows even more every day. For Robert, making useful heirloom tools for others is an honor and a pleasure too. Every one of Robert's knives are one of a kind, handcrafted one by one. Following long traditions of old school craftsmanship, he uses simple carbon steel for his knife, which epitomizes the best quality steel has to offer, including ease of sharpening, keenness of edge, incredible strength, and great edge holding ability. With proper care, your Robert Gardner built knife can be passed down through your house for generations. Remember that iron sharpens iron and may the double-edged sword, which is the word of God, make your path plain before you, now and forever. Robert Gardner, Bladesman.
is the mission of Gardner Ministries. Gardner Ministries at Yahoo.com. That's Gardner Ministries at Yahoo.com. Amen. Amen. By the way, just to correct you, my church is not red brick. It was yellow brick. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Well, that's probably better, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, probably... yeah, no, I'm just saying. It's... <clears throat> now you're now the example. You keep talking about this community and enriching the community, and there's talents within that community. About 18 months ago, we had a group of people that started meeting together in a community center, and I don't know. There was probably 20 of us or so. There's over a hundred now. We come together once a month and we break bread together. It's a we we fellowship, and we we spent a year just trying to understand self governance and and how to establish our house and how we remove the compelling interests of Babylon and how we recognize solicitations and how we deal with those. But now we have come into a a a new understanding, if you will, of. Okay, we've we've done the learning. Now, how do we put that into practice? Everyone that's that comes into this community center, and, and it's it's a by membership. It's a private association, and you have to agree to this as our standards. And if you if you agree with what we're teaching, we welcome you in. So they've all signed up. We have started a a mailing list, and it's and it's done by email, and. Uh, it is sent out to everybody that's a member of this community and it says, hey, Joe over here is an auto mechanic and Bill over here, you know, he's a great plumber. And, you know, Becky, she is an outstanding bookkeeper and on and on and on it goes. All those talents of that house are listed. And so everyone in that com community looks and here's what was said. And, and it was not me that brought this up. This is a member of the community that came up in the meeting and said, this is what we need to do. And people grabbed onto it just like that. And they said, because if there's a talent, a skill or a product or, or a goods and services that is available within this community of like-minded believers, I would rather spend my money with my brother and we'll do a private transaction, he and I, then go out to Babylon and search for somebody that's not going to, to uh, run me through the ring or lie to me, you know, uh, inflate the prices. That's actually happening right now. We're actually doing that. Now we've also got people, we meet once a month. This month we had a, a, an individual who is a, a, a college professor in ag. And not just a professor, but he literally homesteads and lives it out as well. And he teaches all over the country, an expert in, in many fields in agriculture, but he's also an expert in food storage. He, he taught our people, uh, he was a, a keynote speaker at our meeting, taught them how to handle food storage. Because it's just a wise thing to be able to, to, to store your food and and. You, he said, "You don't even have to grow it. There's farmers markets everywhere. There's there's uh, places you can buy good food, and then you you bring it home and you can." And he taught people how to how to can, to freeze dry, to uh, dehydrate, to uh, vacuum pack, to you know water bath, all these things. That's what. To, but the month before that, there was an individual who taught how to make how to build an emergency cook stove and an emergency heater for your house if the power's out. We live in tornado country, and, and he taught them about some uh, uh, making some medicinal products for this. The month before that, we had a doctor that's a part of our community that spoke to them about health care and how, how you can manage your own health care, not going to a, a pharmaceutical uh, selling institution to have them manage your health care. You can, and, and he's not against doctors and he's not against those things that you need, but we allow other people to manage our house, manage our health, manage our children, manage uh, our governments, manage everything for us because we believe we're being represented. It goes right back to where you started and we're the ones that are supposed to be managing and we're even supposed to be managing creation and we've we've talked about that over and over and over and that's that's where this community can go is into a place of 
healing creation, fulfilling the Great Commission, and enriching the lives of our own families and those families around us. <clears throat> what you were talking about, Randy, is called infrastructure. It's called infrastructure of the kingdom. Yes. And that's exactly, you know, <clears throat> that's exactly what comes after governance. You know, if you don't have good governance, you'll never have good infrastructure. Okay, you got to have one before you have the other. But once you've got the governance right, and you can then put together infrastructure in all areas of life, including the fun ones, you know, don't leave those out, you know. There's people who have talents like playing guitar and singing and picking banjo, right? Mm -hmm. You know, those, those, those guys are important too. Uh, all that infrastructure starts to add up to, to the, you know, a happy community. That's, that's where you get to and a I'm happy community. I'm completely honest with you about that. It, it didn't come immediately, and it didn't come easy, and there's always going to be weak links. But if you're discouraged by one weak link, weak link here or there, uh, you're going to just be discouraged because they're <laughs> always going to exist. They're always going to exist. But overall... It's exciting when someone else gets up and shares about what their house does and how they can uh, can benefit. But you can't get discouraged about how long it takes because it takes as long as it takes. People have to come to that place of understanding. And maybe you're the, the one that, that uh, God is waiting on to be the messenger to bring that understanding. And, and Randy, don't you take value when somebody presents their house and starts to tell you the things that they're, that they, you know, got they've been given an ability to do. They've been, they have talents. Don't doesn't the whole community take value in that and want to invest in that? Yes. So yes. so you know so that that proves the point that we're talking about here tonight. That there really isn't. Uh, what what you call it a, uh, a what what was the word you just used um, a, a lesser I don't know, I person it, so now it's gone <laughs> a less a lesser a lesser person or what you call them oh, oh the weakest link yeah there really isn't a weak link in a community once you once once the everybody in the community has had an opportunity to present themselves. There really isn't a weak link because you can you can start to identify even in the weak link, even in that person who maybe doesn't have, who doesn't maybe have talents in in areas with their hands. Maybe they have talents with their brain. Maybe they have talents with with their heart. Maybe they're a prayerful person, somebody who <coughs> spends a lot of time giving of themselves. You know, there's just a lot of different areas. We that we can pinpoint, Randy. That um, you know, that's we got to give word. people. Yeah, that's a good because they may not. They're that might have even been a bad term to use. Weak link because it, personalities are all different. Some people, when they hear something, they go, "I'm going to get this done." But others are procrastinators. But it doesn't mean they're any. They're any. Uh, they're actually a weak link. They're not any less of a person. They just have a different personality, and they they approach things based on the personality that God gave them. And our personalities are a gift from God. But I, I hear what you're saying in community. You deal with all of those things, and it still works. It still works and brings the community up. Yeah, and, you know, and, and you could have that one awkward, you know, <laughs> that one awkward member of the <laughs> community that isolates themselves or, you know, doesn't want to be a part of a social, of a social environment, and maybe they can make a great, you know, security officer for the whole community, or you know, they can make somebody, you know, there's there's always an opportunity to enrich somebody and to and to promote them in an area of their life yes. that you know that that that's perfect for them, and that's part of the job of the community, and we've that's missed it, Randy. Yeah, that's another big issue because, um, you know, a, as we do that, the number one thing that holds people back, Rick, is fear. Yep. Oh, Babylon solicited me, and I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. If you have a community behind you, you get to just throw that fear out the window. 
Yep. Throw that fear out the window because somebody has has the skill set and the ability. And you know, Rick, as we're talking about this, what's coming to my mind is we're getting ready to do something on November 4th that is bringing the nationwide community together. November 3rd. Oh, or third, yeah. Number third, three, third four, fourth, five. and fifth. Yeah. Third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, we're, we're doing uh, some testimony and sound check and some small stuff on the third. The fourth is going to be uh, uh, like 11 yeah. and a half hours. Long day. All day. Yeah. And, and it's, but, but because we're doing it online and the way it's being done and the, all the states are coming together in groups where they can, and they'll, they'll be large groups coming together and we'll be hearing from each of those those communities, we'll be hearing from those communities all day long. They'll be teaching, and then on uh, the fifth, we're going to have two or two or two and a half hours of, of questions and answers. So, it's it really is finding out that there are communities out there, and we're going to come together as one body, clean hands, clean feet, together to say, you're not isolated over here in Wisconsin. You're not isolated over here in Arizona. You're not isolated over here. Guess what? We're all together with you for the for the very same cause because we are people of the way. Right. So just like I've said before on this show, what are we as an ecclesia? <clears throat> We're presenters of the kingdom. What are you as a house? You're presenters of your house. What are we as a community? You're presenters of the community. Everything is about making presentation, making it known, bringing it forth. Nothing is about you being replicated somewhere else. It's not about representation. It's never been about representation. What a dumb word. We should never have used that stupid word. It's about presentation not representation. Wow. So so let me redefine what our forefathers meant, okay? I'm going to say it a different way. Okay. No taxation without presentation. There you go. Okay? There you go. <clears throat> Don't you dare assume that you that that you understand my interest. Cuz tax is all about interest. It's about it's it's about interest, okay? Don't you dare under th think for a second you understand my interest until you allow me to present myself. That's strong word right there. Yeah, Absolutely. those are those are fighting that words. Applies, that applies in every area of your life. It does. It applies in every area of your life, and you know there are people, good people, Rick, good smart people, and and they know something's wrong. And they're teaching things all across the country, even as we're doing this this podcast. But they, at the end of the day, they've never been in a place to actually present themselves or remove the tether, remove the interest, remove that compelling interest, because that interest serves <laughs> one place. It serves Babylon. It does not serve your house. And they're close. Some of them are really close. But... It literally does come down to, to don't you dare think you can re you can represent me because you are not me. I can only present myself. And we are presenters of the king. And wow, a strong statement. We don't yep. need to worry about uh, all these terms we learned all these years about uh, missionaries and disciples and apostles and prophets and priests. We're all presenters of of the king presenters yep just present <clears throat> so if you're listening to the c2k report tonight and you know you could start playing the piano softly in the background please no i'm just kidding yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> i was gonna give an invitation here no right. but, <laughs> but uh if, if you're listening to the c2k report tonight and you've discovered that you know, that you've been duped, that you've been tricked, that, that, that all, you know, and, and you heard something tonight that really impacted your life and you thought to yourself, 
man, that's what I've been needing my whole life. We have a couple things that we need to share with you. First of all, we have a introductory class. That introductory class is going to help you to understand the whole concept of what it is that we are doing as an Ecclesia. Okay? We also have advanced classes, which you'll you'll be seeing that flash across the screen too. But most importantly, we have a private way of communicating where you can present yourself to other brothers and sisters of this community. And after all the things that we just talked about tonight, if there's anything I want you to hear is we have a community. We have a community of people that love the Lord, that are like-minded to you. And that community is found uh, in, in, a, in a private server with a private email. Okay? So, so in order for you to be able to engage and, and naturalize yourself into this ecclesia that we are standing up, you're going to need that private email. Okay? Mm -hmm. So email me at c2kreport at outlook.com. That's c2kreport at outlook.com. And let me know that you want the email agreement. It is literally, and I, I'm sorry for the amount, it's extremely expensive, $10 a year. Okay? I mean, that is less than Shop Your Farm, which is $12 a year, which you also right. need. Okay, but ten dollars a year—that is amazing to be able to communicate with other brothers and sisters that are in the same boat that you are, that are naturalizing to the same ecclesia embassy that you are, and and and, and we can begin to engage together as community. And, and I'll let folks know, Rick. Sometimes I get asked, "Well, why do we need?" that email, why can't I just use my, my email? This is a closed system, a very closed and private system. You'll keep your existing email accounts for, for commercial things and friends, but, but this community is inside this closed system so you can talk freely and privately and securely. You, you would literally lose connection with your lost uncle in Africa who has millions of dollars if you didn't have your Babylonian email. So keep it. Keep it. <laughs> so keep okay? it. <laughs> your, your, your Kenyan grandfather um, that, that you lost contact with that has $3 trillion in his account and only needs your social security number, uh, he will lose contact it. with you if you get rid of that Babylonian account. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. We still have some of these as well. I don't know if you can see that Flash clearly drives. or not. Sure can. Yep, c 2 k There's com. Like eight, and a, eight and a half hours of teaching on there, examples, real-life testimonies, some uh, foundational uh, information. Uh, so uh, those, those are still available, and uh, you can uh, uh, get those through the uh, c2kreport.com, I do believe. You sure can. You can get them right okay. through there. So with that... I don't have anything more to share with you tonight. Uh, I'm already probably on the heretichunter.com website um, <laughs> as one of those guys that you got to stay away from if you're in the Ecclesia. So, uh, so Randy, I'm Actually, turning this all over to you. You're, you're just causing us to, to think through, through a different lens because we've worn the same lens that Babylon gave us or the same lens that our seminary gave us or the same lens that our Sunday school teacher gave us. And, and you're not, you're not searching out something that outside the word you said, let's look at this through a different lens so that we can gain some understanding of what God intended for us to do and quit waiting on him to do what we're supposed to be doing. So take that here, take hunters.com. Okay. <laughs> And uh, is there any other any other word we need to give about? Uh, oh yeah, there is. If you if you are unaware, and maybe somebody's just introduced you to the C2K report, like okay, how do I find out more about this? How do, you can go to c2kreport.com. You can 
Uh, we've had people binge watch these shows. I feel really bad for them. They have no life, right? <laughs> uh, C2K Report is on Rumble. It's on YouTube. It's on Shake and Wake Radio. Uh, Rick, make sure that all that stuff goes out. Thanks, Rick. He takes care of that every week. But something else you can do, if you get a membership, and you've heard us talk about this before, but we have to continue bringing this up because it's important. You can go to shopyourfarm.com, and it sounds like it's a uh, farmer's market, and it sort of kind of is on the front side, <laughs> but uh, on the back side, there are so many things that are happening. We can, I can send documents back and forth to Rick, and he can send them to me in, in a very secure fashion. It's just a link, and it's, it's there, there are other secure things that do the same thing, but $12 a year, we can message back and forth. We can do a video conference just like Rick and I are doing right now on Shop Your Farm Securely. That's where our, our uh, upcoming summit's going to be held. But there's a forum there. And if you click on the forum, and you have to be a member to get back into the forum, you can find out if your state has a monthly meeting, a, a discussion group. And if your state has a discussion group, you can join into that discussion group and find out what's going on in your state. And if it doesn't, you can reach out to Rick and say, hey, how do we get a discussion group going in uh, in my state? Because this sounds interesting to me. That forum is not a lot of use right now. There's a little bit of discussion going on, but I think the more people that come in say, wow, we can discuss here instead of over there on uh, that, that uh Telegram, Telegram or, yeah. or Signal or something else where, you know, everybody's seeing everything. We can discuss it and get to the point and not have all the trolls coming in and say, oh, you can't do that. Oh, you ought to do this. And no, you know, you're crazy and you're full of it as the Christmas turkey and blah, 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 blah. No, you, I, I see the forum continuing to grow in that respect. But right now, it is the place to find out about your state discussion group, when they meet, what the room name is, how you get in, who your state moderator is, and you can go to, uh, again, info, uh, no, you go C2K report at outlook.com and tell Rick, hey, I live over here in uh, Timbuktu and we got no discussion group. Um, You're probably and, not uh, speaking English if you live in Timbuktu, but okay. <laughs> okay. As long as you speak English, you can, <laughs> you got Google Translate, right? No. Uh, but you can you can maybe be the person to start that discussion group. But that's how you're going to find out about the summit. That's how you're going to find out about state meetings. That's how you're going to find out about what's going on. And that's also a good place to get help. And <clears throat> if you don't see your state there, or if you do see your state there and there's not many people in your state, there are other states that would be glad to have you come on and just share some time with them. Florida, Absolutely. Georgia, Wisconsin. These are great places. Texas. These are great groups that just are constantly meeting and having wonderful discussions. So feel free to jump on any of those. Absolutely. Good yeah. word. So with that said, um, Randy, do you have anything special for us tonight? You know, we're 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 closing in on on our November summit, man. We're just a few weeks away and I'm I'm excited. My wife's excited. It's like a second honeymoon for us. <laughs> honeymoon? I, I haven't had a first one yet. <laughs> well we'll we'll have to get you your first one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is just a, a little short thing. We've done a while tonight, and uh, I call this, Rick, I call this fleeting freedom, as in it's running away, fleeting freedom. Then let me wet my whistle. Yeah, go ahead. Why, while goes, you're at it, wet your lips, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> it goes like this. Let freedom ring is what we sing while we sell our freedom cheap the statue calls to one and all while we're dying at her feet on freedom shore she'll stand no more unless we cure sin's cancer fall on our knees to heaven plead is america's only answer when on god we call we will stand tall and be one nation under god we'll explode expose the lies before we die proving hell has had us robbed 
Yes, a pagan statue stands in New York Harbor with a torch held in her hand, supposedly a welcome call to one and all who would venture to this land. As followers of Christ, we've a torch to hold. We are called to bear a holy light, showing every man's sin's curse is overcome by God's power and his might. When God's people The ones who are called by his holy name will humble themselves before our mighty God, bringing him our shame. And on our knees with contrite hearts, we fervently plead and pray. God has promised he will heal our land and its people he will save. Alas, no true freedom can be found in New York's famous harbor. As grand as the statue seems to be, Freedom requires something larger. A savior hung on a rugged cross high on a barren hill. The call he gave to one and all is sounding from there still. It is the it is only in the person of Jesus Christ that liberty may be obtained. It is only by his grace that judgment has been restrained. Too many who died for freedom sadly had to die in vain. And now too few are humbled to repentance for our freedom to be sustained. Everything we do, it's all about the blood. 